If you're going to get the profit out of God's Word that He's put in it, by the way, you have to approach it the way God says to approach it. He said, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Everything in the Word of God is profitable for you. But everything in the Word of God is not about you. It's not all written to you. It's not all written about you. It's all for you. It's all for your profit and understanding. But it's not all about you. You know, you have to get over the, the self-conceited attitude that everything in the Bible is about you. Everything in the Bible is not about you. God has more people in His programs than just you. <laughs> and that might be a shock to you. That might startle you. But you have to get... You see, we, we, when you try to make everything about you, it ain't all about you. The will of God is not about you. It's about, uh, it's about God. You want to be involved in it, find out what God's doing. Quit worrying about what you're doing and quit worrying about what He wants you to do. Figure out what He's doing. And you find out what God's doing, then just go do that. Because if you'll go do what God is doing... You'll be doing the will of God. You say, well, all that's nice to say, Brother Rick, but how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You don't have God's approval. You need to study. You need to get in God's Word. Quit using it just like a little, like a panacea. You know, folks tote around the Bible. They pack the Bible around, put it under their arm, tote it around like it's a lucky charm. That book's meant to be studied. Isaiah told Israel, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Get in God's word, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. How are you going to do that? Your, great, your, great, your aim's got to be to be approved by God. It doesn't make any difference if I approve you, another preacher approves you, or a church approves you. You've got all kind of religious systems that endorse preachers. You know what that means? Well, that and 50 cents will buy you a cup of coffee in a cheap restaurant. Well, it takes a buck at McDonald's, but that's, and that's pretty cheap. It means nothing. Nothing. As far as God's concerned. That means a lot for people, religious systems, people that are desiring to please God. But if you want to please, uh, please men, rather, but if you want to please God, you study, to, uh, study to show that self approved unto God. How do you do it? Rightly dividing the word of truth. And if you watch this program very often, you know that that's something we talk about a lot. About rightly dividing the word of truth. The key to right division, well, right division is the key to the Bible. But the key to right division is to do it the Bible's way. You see, all kind of people have all kind of ways to rightly divide God's word. Covenant theology has, has its way. Dispensational theology has its way. All kind of theologies, all kind of churches, all kind of preachers, all kind of ideas. You, you stay tuned to this TV station, and as you watch through the day on this station, you'll see all kind of people telling you what you need to know, how to study the Bible. It always fascinated me, if Paul said rightly divide it, then who would be the first person you probably want? If God through Paul said to do it, who would you think that God, through, that God would use to tell you how to do it? It may, always made sense to me. If God through Paul tells me how to do it, and I say, Paul, how would you rightly divide God's word? I think he's the one to ask. That's why we talk to you about Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians 2 verse number 11. Paul says, wherefore, in time, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, that I which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. So in Paul's mind, there's a time in the Bible called time past. And there's some things about time past that you need to notice so that you know when you're in time past. Then verse 11 he says, but now... In Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off are made nigh by the, by the blood of Christ. Then in verse number 7, he talks about that in the ages to come. And so I, I, I've, I've drawn this on the board for, for, you know, for our TV program for all these years because these three issues, time past but now and the ages to come, that's the essence of what dispensational Bible study is about. Now, dispensational Bible study is what Paul's talking about when he says rightly dividing the word of truth. Make the distinctions in God's word that God makes. By the way, the, the word dispensation, 
Dispensational Bible study is the only kind of Bible study you'll find that's authored by God's Word. Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 3, the next chapter, Paul says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God that's given to me. Isn't that interesting? He talks about the dispensation of God that's committed to him. He talks about the dispensation of the gospel. The, the word dispensation is used in a King James Bible. Now, if you don't have a King James Bible, you won't find any of this stuff in it, which means you, you, you're losing the key to understanding the Bible by abandoning the King James Bible. But what happens is, to study the Bible dispensationally, the Apostle Paul lays out a timeline. That's what that is. Past, present, and future. Time past, but now the age is to come. And there, there are characteristics in time past of God's Word uh, that he lays out there, the distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, and so forth. Come with me to Romans chapter 5. Time past, but now the age is to come is the, is the layout, is the time chart. Within that time chart, there are a series of dispensations. A dispensation, think about what that word, it's the noun form of the verb to dispense. To dispense something means to give it out. A dispensation is the thing that is given out. A dispensation is a particular set of instructions that God gives for man's obedience. And it's when God gives particular things, this is what I'm doing and this is what man has to focus on. If you look at Romans chapter 5, you'll see how Paul lays out his dispensational understanding that fits in this chart. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12. Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So sin start, we're going to start back over here with one man. Now that one man is who? That one man is Adam. So we're going to start with God giving Adam some information. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin was not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned, notice, from Adam to Moses. So you're going to start back here with Adam, and, and you're going to come down here to another man, and that man's name is Moses. And Paul says, from Adam to Moses, there's a certain way things were done. Now, when you come to Moses, and, 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 and by the way, from Adam to Moses, then if you come down to verse number 20, moreover the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. With Moses, the law enters. But the law is going to be there until another guy shows up, and that guy is the Lord Jesus Christ. And after the Lord Jesus Christ shows up, there's going to be a period of time that he calls grace. So you begin to see that what Paul's doing here is he's laying out from Adam to Moses, there was a certain kind of an arrangement. Then the law is added to what was back here between Adam and Moses, and the law goes over here till the time of the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming. That's why John chapter 1 verse 17 says that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by the Lord, by Jesus Christ. So there's a, there's a different, now, you know, if you're, if you're a covenant theologian, you just say there's two, there's two uh, dispensations. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. But when Paul lays it out, he says, no, no, no. There's Adam to Moses. A certain arrangement was going on there, a certain set of instructions. Then the law is added to it. And then after that comes grace. And then after grace, the Lord Jesus Christ comes back over here and he sets up his kingdom. So you have the, the second coming of Christ over here. And when he comes over here, he's going to set up his kingdom. And in this kingdom, he's going to bring to fruition the things that he did back here. Now you say, well, you didn't put a name on that one, Adam and Moses. Well, come with me to Galatians chapter 3. And notice that Paul 
gives you an identification about what, what the law was added to. Galatians 3, verse number 19. Wherefore there then serveth the law. It was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of the law. What was the law added to? The law was added to, prom to the promise that God had made. Back here from Adam to Moses, the issue was a promise God had made. Then the law got added to that promise, and that law is there until the Lord Jesus Christ comes, and through the cross work of Christ over here, gets rid of the law, gets rid of the old covenant, makes a new covenant that's going to accomplish the, 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 the purpose of God with the nation Israel. Then you have in here, by the way, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, he goes to heaven up here, and from heaven, he reveals some information through the Apostle Paul about the grace of God in here and the church, the body of Christ. This, this is where the mystery program comes in. That's where the but now is. You have the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of prophecy, then the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, and that's where the two different programs come in. Right in here. By the way, somebody says, well, how about grace? You know when he says the law came was given by Moses and grace and truth came by Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful way that says that, John 1, 17? The law was given, sent by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. When God sent the law, the law was going to condemn them. So he sent it. When he gave it to them in, in uh, Exodus 19, he says... Don't come near the mountain. You come near the mountain where I'm going to give this law, it'll kill you. You'll die. Why? You're sinners. And the law is going to point out your sin. So the law put a barrier between God and man. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. The Word became flesh. Came right down here and dwelled with us and said, Come, let me bring you into fellowship with me. That's the difference between law and grace. But you know when the law came with Moses? It didn't come when he first started. When Moses first tried to deliver Israel, Israel rejected him. He goes out in the wilderness for 40 years. Then he comes and delivers Israel out of, the, out of, out of Egypt. They go to Mount Sinai. So the law didn't come with Moses at, his, at, at, the, at the first moment of his ministry. It came much later. Grace and truth doesn't, doesn't come. Jesus Christ is made of a woman made under the law. Grace doesn't come till later. It comes through the cross. Paul says we're reconciled to God in one body by the cross, not at the cross, by the cross. Just like the law wasn't given when Moses first showed up and appeared, but later... The revelation of the grace of God doesn't show up when Christ first appears, but rather when he reveals it through the Apostle Paul over here. So there's some, there's some transition issues in here. The first dispensation is the dispensation of promise. Let, let, let me show you. Come with me to Matthew chapter 25. Here's an interesting passage about this. Matthew chapter 25. And I'll tell you what, go back with me to the book of Genesis first. Let, let me just get the promise out here on the table for you. Genesis chapter, and by the way, just start in Genesis 2, because some people, if promise is a dispensation, law is a dispensation, grace is a dispensation, and then there's the dispensation of the fullness of time, the kingdom out here, that's four dispensations. A lot of people have seven, and some people want to have five, some people want to have 15, Okay. I'm just trying to lay out Paul's understanding of the way things laid out. Before Adam's sin, God gave Adam some instructions. And the instructions that God gave Adam back here, some people want to make this the dispensation of innocence. Every dispensation, listen to me, every dispensation had a transition into it. The promise, because of the fall of man, had a transition, and that's what the garden was about. 
The law has a transition. That's what the wilderness was about. Grace has a transition. That's what the latter part of the book of Acts is about. The kingdom has a transition. That's what the thousand year millennial reign is about. Every dispensation has a transition into it. The garden back there. What did God tell Adam when he put him in the garden? Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden. Why? To dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God's command... In other words, he says, I put you there to work. <laughs> I, thought, I want you to go out there and work in this garden. Work it, dress it, keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good uh, uh, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. Now we always talk about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they weren't supposed to eat of because they did. But you understand, God said every tree of the garden you can eat. There's this abundant provision for you. Go and enjoy it. <laughs> Go out there and discover what I've put there for you. So man's original commission was a promise from God, was a, a commission from God to go out and enjoy the provisions. One restriction, one test, don't eat this one. Man failed. Chapter 3, verse 15. After man failed, God made him a promise. I will put him, he's talking to Satan, he said, I'll put enmity between thee and, thy, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. There's the promise, in theology they call that verse the proto-evangel, the first good news. God gave man, he said, I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to take you out of, from under satanic captivity, I'm going to crush Satan, and I'm going to give the seed of the woman is going to be where salvation is going to be for you. Now the seed of the woman, come over to chapter number 12 of Genesis, becomes the seed of Abraham. You need to, if you follow the seed line through the Bible, it starts back here with the seed of the woman, and the seed of the woman becomes the nation Israel. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 2, talking to Abraham. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In chapter 22 he says, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. God's going to give Abraham that promise of the, of the seed of the woman, becomes the seed of Abraham. And he said, Them that bless thee, I'll bless. Them that curse thee, I'll curse. So the promise is that God's going to give man, a, a, going to give man redemption. God's going to restore man back to his ultimate purpose for for man in reigning in the earth and this promise is what man was to hold on to the, the seed line becomes the seed of the woman becomes the seed of Abraham becomes the nation Israel come with me if you will to Matthew chapter 25 in Matthew 25 when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back Verse 31, the Son of Man shall come in His glory with all the holy angels with Him. Then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. That's right here at the beginning of that kingdom. Before Him may gather all nations. Shall separate the one from the other, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Verse 34, then shall the King, sitting in His kingdom on the throne of His glory, say to, uh, unto them, the Gentiles on His right hand, come Ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. goes right back there to what God intended man to do in that garden, was to go out and, and subdue it and have dominion over it and be the king in the earth, bring the headship of Jesus Christ to, to bear in the earth. Man sin, God makes Adam the promise, I'll do for you what you didn't do for yourself. When, when that kingdom comes, he says, Come ye blessed of my father. What did he tell Abraham? Them that bless thee I will bless. Why do they get blessed in Matthew 25? When you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. How do they get cursed? When you did not do it to one of the least of these my brethren, you didn't do it. The brethren, there is the nation Israel. The Gentiles that blessed Israel got the blessing. When he says, come ye blessed of my father, he says, come and inherit the blessing of the promise of the seed that God made back there. 
So that promise back there is looking forward to the fulfillment of God's purpose in the earth. But because Israel not only was the son of Abraham, they were the son of Adam, it had to be very clear to them that it wasn't going to be by their work and their accomplishment that it was accomplished. So he adds, Galatians 3.19 says, he added the law. Now the law, when it's added, if you look at Galatians 3.19, it's a fascinating way he says it. The law, what's the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgression. It was added to make sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. It was added so that Israel would understand that God was going to do it through them, but it wasn't going to be them that did it. It was going to be him that did it, using them as his instrument. It was added because of the transgression. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. You see, the seed line has to be not, not, not Adam's seed line, not even physical Abraham's seed line, but Christ. It has to be what God does through them. The law was added till the seed should come. That is, the law is not going to be permanent. It's only going to be there until the seed comes. When the seed comes, something else is going to show up. So they know the law is not going to be a permanent dispensation. And when the law comes in, when Christ comes, he takes away the law. Hebrews chapter 7 says the law was fault, uh, had faults in it. Why? Not, not the law, but the people. And because they couldn't keep it, therefore he had to make a new covenant with them. A covenant wherein they would find grace in the eyes of the Lord. So you have the law being done away with. That's what Christ is about. This is why so many people think that when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ in his ministry, his earthly ministry, that that's when the change takes place. The change doesn't take place when Jesus shows up. The law it, it cannot be changed. Hebrews 9.17 says that, that, the, that a, new, a new covenant couldn't come in until after the death of the testator. So it can't be until after the death of Christ that, that anything can change. And the dispensation of grace where, where we are here, this is a mystery. This is a secret program in here. So all of a sudden, in the, in, and that's why the timeline aspect of it is so important. Because what's going on back here in time past is what he's going to accomplish and bring to fruition in the ages to come. But where we are right now in this mystery program, this stuff back here is prophecy. It's spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. That's what the promise was about. That's what the law is about. But today God has interrupted the prophetic program and inserted a parenthetical expression in here called the dispensation of the grace of God. That's why this one is called a specifically identified as a dispensation so you don't miss it. This dispensation is forming the church, the body of Christ, an agency that God's going to use to establish his authority, not simply in the earth, as he did through the seed, of, seed, the seed line here, but in the heavenly places. Because God's authority is not just in the earth, the heavens belong to him too. And when he put man in the earth back here and sent him out to have authority in the earth, it wasn't until you came to the Apostle Paul and that you understand that God has a, a plan to reconcile the heavens unto himself through this secret agency. And so you have a new dispensation in here, a new set of instructions about how God wants us to operate things that are adequate and appropriate to the church the body of Christ you go back over here and try to live under the promise or live under the law or go over here and try to live under the kingdom program the earthly kingdom program and it won't work for you you come into the program that God has in effect today and that instru those instructions they work adequately they work appropriately they actually bring God's word the exceeding greatness of the power of God's word to bear in your life you don't have to be faking it till you make it back over here. You, you come in here and take God's Word, the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up, and it equips you to live on planet Earth right now for His glory so that in the ages to come, He can use you for that purpose. Understand, there's promise, 
there's law, there's grace, and Paul calls this the dispensation of the fullness of time. The kingdom, where the kingdom reigns in the heaven and the kingdom reigns in the earth, is the dispensation of the fullness of time because it brings to fruition what God created the universe for to begin with. Where we are is right here. When you rightly divide God's word, you understand what dispensation you're in you don't have to go and, and make out like you're somewhere else. You know where your instructions are, what they're about, who you are in Jesus Christ, and you're able to have God's Word work effectually in you that believe. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the earth and of Christ Israel, the book of Acts, the fall of Israel, salvation going to the Gentiles, Romans to Philemon. That's where we are today. That's who you are. Go let that be a reality in your life because you trust it. Thanks for being with us. Till next time. Maranatha.